This is why this one's better. You're going on both sides. Okay? If you want the numerical derivative of this, you can calculate it. Compute the numerical derivative just means use this. Don't actually do the limit. If you want it at 2, what you're going to do is, here's what x cubed looks like, and here's 2 depending on the scale. What you're going to do is you're going to say, I'm going to use a point there and there, only I'm going to make this 1.999, and I'm going to make this point 2.001, and I'm going to find the slope between those two. You could have done this in grade 10 if you, if you thought about what the slope of the curve is. You could estimate the slope of that tangent using this. So you can say, I want the x value, so on the bottom of my expression, it's going to be the difference. 2.001 minus 1.999. Or in other words, the difference is, what's the difference here? 0 0.002. What's on top of that expression? I need to know the actual function values now, right? I need these values. I need the y values. How do I calculate the y values? Cubit, right? 2.001 cubed minus 1.999 cubed. If you put that into your calculator, that's going to give you an estimate of the slope, and it's going to be a pretty good estimate because most functions change gradually like that. It, there isn't sudden changes. If there's a sudden change like in that absolute value graph where it's a sharp corner, it's it's undefined, right? Can you... Uh, should be. This gives you... This gives you 12 point, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. It's actually 12 if you went through and did it and computed it properly. So you can only trust this... If you only do three decimals here... Three decimal places. You can't trust this more than three decimal places. And you can use your intuition and say it's probably exactly 12. If you do that numerical derivative thing, okay, it, it'll give you the same thing. Numerical derivative, remember, i got to put in the function. x will do this. Remember, you could just do x cubed that way. And we got to put the, the, the variable as that. We have to say where we want to do this, which was, what was the value? Two. Two. Now, you can put in, there's an optional fourth number you can put in here, which is H, telling it what the H is. If you leave H off, what it does is what I just did. One one thousandth. It gives you that same number. You could put in a different H value if you want it to be more accurate. You could put in point zero zero put in that many zeros and say that's what you want for your h value, then it's going to be more accurate. Then it's rounding it, right? Then it, it rounds it to actually 12. You could put less of an h value if you want. I don't know why you'd want that. Please be less accurate here. Will it let you do 10? Well, let's put, let's put point 0.1 here for a second, and then it's that. You want to do 10? It's a good question. If we make a ridiculous... That's that's all we got in calculus here, right? That's obviously completely wrong, right? Don't do ten. Don't do ten. Don't make your h value really big like that. What it's obviously doing then is it's saying um, it's going it's saying two go all the way up to twelve here, and then go all the way down to negative eight. Find the slope between those two points. It's obviously a lot steeper because these go almost vertically by the looks of it. This is, we already discussed this, but what it's doing is, of course, it's saying, uh, if I go a little bit this way, 0 0.001 that way, and I go a little bit this way, 0 0.001 that way, and I calculate the slope, the slope looks like it's zero even though it's actually undefined at that point. I would like you to do this right now. Notice what this is. I have not given you an equation. No equation for you. Uh, 
I won't be able to use that much longer, except as long as that show is in syndication, then we can make jokes like that. I know we're way past, once it's past 10, I got to just keep going and then split it in half after. The problem is where to split it. I Probably, but I, it's better if I, you know, stop and I realize I'm stopping. This, which again, I forgot to start this again. If you want the derivative at 1, what's the best you can do here? Yeah, you can estimate it a little bit on each side. You can use that difference quotient. The best guess is going to be the symmetric difference quotient, but I could have come up with these numbers so that it isn't a good guess. Um, we don't have the luxury of going 0 0.001 to the left or right, so what do you have to do? You have to go 1, right? It could be a bad guess. If it was a real situation, it could be a good guess. Can you calculate each of those things? And you don't need to do all of them because they're all the same other than the end point. You've got to think about what you can do at an end point. Okay? So do at least one end point and at least a couple in the middle. If you wanted to, you could plot those points and have a guess as to what the function might look like. At 0, it's 5. At 1, it's 2. And then at 2, it's 1 and so on. We'll pause while you do that. <laughs> 